Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Helm with Maureen Max. I am your host, Lisa, and he is your other host, Kelly. Kelly, how are you guys uh, doing out there? I hope they're doing great. I hope they're following along all of these voting broadcasts. Please subscribe and follow us on Facebook at Marine Max Leisure, on Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, and on Twitter at Marine Max. We are bringing you all the voting news straight to your couch, straight to your inbox, straight to your social media platforms. And please drop your questions and comments below while we're diving into this uh, adventure here. So on today's voting broadcast, we have Larry and April Smith, and they are the proud owners of an Aquila 44 power catamaran called the One-Eyed Dog. And let's get into their tail, shall we? Welcome, <laughs> Larry that. and April. Yeah, the tail. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. And we have Abby, the One-Eyed Dog. Oh, there is Abby. Oh, there she is. Abby. <laughs> so could you... Look, looks like you're aboard a boat. Are you on the Aquila today? We're on the Aquila. We are on the Aquila. This is our home. This is where we live 24-7. All right, and, and Larry, where are you physically located? Physically, we're in uh, Fort Myers, Florida right now at the oh. uh, Marina and Edison Ford. All right. So could you well, guys uh, kind of give us a, a brief uh, a history of your of your boating experiences? Kind of how did you get into boating and, and what is it that you just love about this, uh, this experience? Well, uh, we definitely have a different experience getting into boating because we actually used to own a horse ranch so oh. for 28 years. And we went on a sailboat catamaran trip with some friends and had a great time doing that and thought, you know what, let's look at buying a catamaran sailboat and keep it in the BBI and do that. While we're shopping for that, we found the Great American Loop and decided that was what we wanted to do. So we actually bought our very first boat was a 52 foot Hatteras sport deck. And that's what we did our first loop on. And then of course we did the second great loop on our Aquila. So we did, we were scuba divers and years ago I crew membered on an 86 foot sailboat y'all and Larry crewed on a trimaran. But our full experience started with a 52 foot Hatteras in 19, uh, in, in 2000, three years ago, 2017. 2016. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And, and so Aquila, how did you, uh, what was it about Aquila when you first saw it that, uh, you know, what, what, what is it about that Aquila power catamaran that just caught your eye? Uh, well, we, we really wanted a power cat to begin with when we bought the Hatteras, but we, because of the loop, we bought the power, the hat. Um, we were at the Charleston in water boat show in 2017 and saw our first Aquila and fell in love with it. I walked on the boat and I walked off the boat. I looked at Larry, I said, this is our next boat. And I had a little brochure and I kept it in our cabin of our, our boat and I looked at it, I'd pull it out and I'd look at it and <laughs> kind of, you know, check it out every once in a while. And around September of 2017, as we're coming close to ending the loop, we contacted Raul Bermudez of, of Marine Max Charter and said, you know, we want to charter one and we want to buy one and what do we do? And, and that kind of led to where we are today. So we did actually do a charter, but that little hurricane thing kind of ruined wow. it. So we ended up just buying it instead. But, and the funniest thing was, is I went back and I was looking at old photographs. And when we were down the BBI, I found a picture that I took of an Aquila that I fell in love with. And I don't even remember where the heck it was, but it's on my cell phone in 2014. It was meant oh, to wow. be. It was meant yeah. to be. I got chills when I thought about it, you know. So. But, so, okay. so what are, what are some of the features of the Aquila? Um, you know, what what is it about it? So, I mean, could you kind of describe your boat uh, specifically and, and some of the features that you know changes the game for you to, to especially live on it too? Um, for for me, I, I think one of the main factors were the engines and the fuel economy. Uh, this vessel is half; it, it takes half the fuel. Than, than our Hatteras took, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. When you can, and especially since we're doing like 5,000 miles a year on it, we burn a lot of fuel. Um, the other thing that I really liked about it was I like the, the, the fly bridge. Um, mm -hmm. It's big, it's open, and you can see everything. And then the other thing I absolutely loved about it was the walkway right down the front off the, uh, off the fly bridge to the bow of the ship. And I, of course, love the full beam master bedroom. I think that's <laughs> awesome. You know, having my little office down there. We also had our boat customized for us, and we did go to China to the factory and did the sea trial on her in China at the factory. Wow. But 
our starboard stateroom is a storeroom. It is not a cabin. We didn't want the company, but this is the house. So we wanted a garage. So we have a beautiful storeroom down there with an extra refrigerator, an extra freezer. We have a stackable washer and dryer where the shower would normally be. We still have the head and the sink, but our shower has is a laundry room. And it's made for, you know, a great area to have all that extra stuff you need when this is the house. So. And that's right. something that actually is something that we've heard from uh, from customers is they like to convert some of their staterooms into a place where, uh, you know, they can store things or they can cool things. And right. it's very versatile. Now, Sorry. Is, is, is the one-eyed dog getting, getting a little lippy? <laughs> 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 I put her hey, down. She wanted to play with her ball, so, Aww, oh, man. <laughs> so she was kind of whimpering for it. And we'd love to hear. So t tell us a story about uh, one eyed dog, uh, uh, Abby, correct? Abby. Abby, Abby is, is a love. She'll be eight years old in July. Um, we had her. She did have both eyes when we got her. She had a, oh. an, a got it scratched when she was three years old, and, and it was infected, and she had to lost her eye. Oh. She is amazing. And she she actually had a news story written about her, and they wrote they, 14 million people read this news story about her all through oh. Europe. So the lady found her on the internet and wanted to write a story about her. But she loves being on the boat, and her life is these balls. She's got it <laughs> all different colors, and everybody and it's the ball of the day. So today's green. Sometimes it's a red ball day, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's purple. You know, but if, if it's a green day and we throw the purple ball, she won't go get it. Oh she my gosh. You're stupid. But you know, they, they fall overboard all the time. So marina divers are always looking for the balls for us. And they don't sink <laughs> in the hole. But well, that's they do, they that makes sink. they sink because they don't float, is what I'm gonna say. But anyway, so but she's great. She's a great boat dog. She does her thing out on the bow. She's got a little mat up there, so she doesn't have to get off and there. go for walks. And she loves to play in the water. So Aww. so she's a great boat dog. And and uh, yeah. how, how does the Aquila? I mean, how do you? I mean, there's a lot of room for her to run around on that boat, right? There is, and mm -hmm. another thing we did to customize is on the rails, on the gunnels, on the side we had something called the splash guard made. So that way we wouldn't have to worry about her getting washed overboard. So sure. she can run up and down by herself. You'll hear her little nails clipping on the deck when you're right. <laughs> uh, um, and, and her favorite thing is when we sit out on the back on the aft deck and we throw the ball through the salon and down to the master bedroom and then she rips back and forth. <laughs> so that's her exercise. You know, we get a lot of bending and stretching and bending and stretching as we're throwing. But that's oh. So. <laughs> A picture here. So, anyways, so but that's oh, that's him. that's the one eye dog. So. Well, she is adorable. Now, was there any debate about the name of the vessel, or was this an obvious choice? It was obvious. I joked about it. I was kidding when I brought it up, but yeah. it was like there was no discussion. Everybody went, "That's it." You know? Well, and then, and then to add on to that, we named our dinghy Patch. Yeah, the dinghy's name is Patch. Of course. Oh, <laughs> that is great. April tried to find eye patches for Abby, but they, they just don't make them that they small. They don't make them that small. No. So, but and yeah. I'm, I'm also bringing some pictures up uh, for everybody at home to check out, too. Uh, so this is, uh, and you can see this, right? This is from your christening, I believe? That is. That's our christening. Yeah, it's in St. Pete. At, at the St. Petersburg Marine Max facility, and that's Harry Mountain, who used to be with Marie Max, and, and Aquila oh, and oh. Raul. Yep. Yes. And uh, so what's what's taking place here? What's going on here? Oh, that's that's the um, the old captain that was doing the teaching us how to use the boat for the first time, you know. So that yep. was real fun. We spent that day. Yeah, doing Marine that. Max was real good on that. I mean, they offered his services, you mm -hmm. know, to take us out. We we would go to all these different docks and practice docking and things like that. Yeah. And he would show me how to do it, and then he'd let me do it, and then he'd correct me and yeah. show me another way. <laughs> then he'd let me practice until I got comfortable, right? which was totally awesome. Because yeah, the catamaran is different to, to pilot than a, the monohull was, you know, so. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. And do, do you guys have the joystick piloting? We do not. Well, we do not, okay. No, we do not have joystick piloting, but we do have a wireless remote control, which gives me control over the engines. Oh, yeah. Uh, so right. I, I can walk up on deck and I can I can control forward and reverse on either engine. That's even better than the full beam master bedroom. 
<laughs> yeah, it definitely makes docking a little bit we easier when you can see. Yeah, we don't. He doesn't need the T-shirt that says "I apologize for what I said while docking the boat." You know, because he's right out there with me. It's easy. It's always our our dockings are non-eventful. It's just mm -hmm. it's the best thing. I mean, getting more involved and anchoring it works for that too. It's the best thing on the boat is our our docking master. So uh, between uh, the monohull and like transitioning into the catamaran, what was the biggest thing you had to learn? Because you're you're boaters, so you've you've grown up doing this. Um, is was there anything that you really had to learn that's different uh, between the two? Not not really. I mean, I think <laughs> I think we take we take a slightly different tack when we have um, when we're out in waves. Um, depending on whether they're hitting us on the beam, the bow, or, or, or trailing. Um, slightly different there, um, only because we have, we're have we so wide, we'll, we'll tend to go like this if we bring, if we hit, you know, the waves are coming in on the beam. Um, but other than that, no, not really. Um, it, it's much more comfortable to go in, you know, kind of bad weather, because once we get up on plane, she just rides really, really smooth. And of course, the Kila's got the the bow bulbs on the there the that on. help keep the nose down. So that makes a very comfortable ride as well. So. Right. I think a lot of people look at a catamaran and think, "Wow, that's a lot of boat." But I, I mean, like you you said it perfectly. There's not a lot. You have to look at the waves a little bit differently because you are on. You've got the dual hulls, but right. other than that, it, it's fairly easy to maneuver if you're used to maneuvering a monohull. Extra actually, it's it's easier to maneuver than the monohull, right? Our Hatteras, you know, the typical monohull is 16 foot or less beam, right? We're 21, yeah. 21 and a half on this. So my engine, my propellers are a little bit further apart than they were on those other boats, which gives mm -hmm. me better torque when I'm, when I'm trying to make a turn or something. Um, so actually, I prefer it. Right, and it's and with the monohull, if you hit with a beam wave, you really do this. Yeah, right, certainly. That not so much. And when, like he said, when you have to turn, he can really do almost a pivot around. I can't. Where on the monohull, it was a big. <laughs> you had to come yeah. up so you didn't feel like you're tipping over. So. And I think that that's a huge, uh, you know, point that a lot of people when when they go from a uh, a monohull to a catamaran is they they see the stability of it too uh in, in rougher waters or just cruising i mean you know when when you have something that's this versus something that's a long wide uh, uh space on the water it definitely uh balances you out in some of the chops so uh i've i've had an experience i've, I've had many experiences on aquila's before and uh, it's just I, that's that one thing you always are just like you know the stability in any kind of seas it, it's just a it really comes in handy in certain situations. At first, I noticed the difference in the weight because our Hatteras was 76,000 pounds. Yes. You know, so this was a much lighter boat. So at first, I could feel that weight difference. But I think that lasted for about, you know, four or five hours. I went, okay, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got all this room. This is great. It's bright. It's light. It's nice. You know, so it wasn't a problem. We did, um, had our boat in Trawler Fest in Baltimore for Aquila uh, from Remax. You, the boats didn't show up because of the hurricanes that were taking place oh. in 2018. So we happened to be there. So we told Raul we'd bring her over and we did. And it was fun because so many of the people there were looking for trawlers. And I was saying, well, come and look at this. Oh, no, I don't want a catamaran. I don't want a catamaran. I said, you come look at this catamaran. <laughs> we have the same fuel economy that your trawler does. And you come look. And several people came back and said, oh, my gosh, we love this boat. So, you know, it, it really, you know, you get the, the comfort level of the, the beamy boat with all the, the nice fittings and the way it's, it's laid out. And we still have the great fuel economy. So it, it really is an mm -hmm. awesome vessel. Well, I do want to just play real quick. So uh, it's crazy that we're, we're speaking today because a few years ago, I had the opportunity to meet you as well, uh, right around the time that you were taking uh, delivery of your boat. And we did a little video. So I want to show everybody, uh, let me see if I can bring it in here. And uh, I'll play it and then we can kind of talk about it uh, right afterwards. So let me get it here. April, we are the proud. 
Members of the Kilo number 4462, and the name of our boat is the One Eye Dog because we have a One Eye Dog named Abby who goes everywhere with us. Well, we wanted a catamaran to begin with. Everywhere with us. Well, we wanted a catamaran to begin with, and we ended up buying a monohull to do the Great Blue Ball. So when we were in Charleston, we went to the boat show there, and the Aquila was there, and I walked on the boat and walked off and got my husband and said, "This is our boat. You got to come see this boat." and we just fell in love with it. I had the flyer, and I carried it with me through the entire Great Loop, and every time I talked to everybody, I said, this is my next boat, this is my next boat. To the sea, to the sailors before us, to One-Eyed Dog. One-Eyed Dog! One -eyed dog. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so tell us about that experience. Tell us about the day uh, that you took ownership, and. You know, what did that feel like? Oh my gosh, it was June 29th of 2018 and it was really wonderful. I mean, it was, you know, so exciting to, like I mentioned, we went back to the factory in China and got to do the sea trial on it in China and then to actually see it come to the States. And we actually have what we call the hat and the cat crossing because we met our boat at, in Apalachicola and go closer. <laughs> we got you. The boat in Apalachicola as they're bringing it off the freighter. So met Captain Roger, who brought it over, and then we were still on our old boat on the Hatteras. So with the cat and the hat, we came across the Gulf of Mexico together into the, the marina there at St. Pete. So that's yeah. cute. And where else? So, so adventure-wise, I mean, uh, tell us about uh, some of the adventures you've had. I know, uh, you know, we'll definitely get into one in particular. Um, so what are some of the places that you've gone and seen in the world and uh, some of the experiences that really stand out to you. On the boat? Certainly, oh. yeah. <laughs> we, we do That's going to take a lot of time to go through all the places. Yeah. Listen, Tibet. No. Yeah, Mount Everest. <laughs> uh. um, at our first year of owning her, we did 9,000 miles. So we've done a lot of traveling on this boat. So we first got her, we went from uh, St. Petersburg across Lake Okeechobee and up to the Chesapeake. And we spent our first summer with her in the Chesapeake to to get you know used to her and get we just all called the, it our shakedown our cruise. shakedown cruise to get any, all the yeah. out and figure out where things were and rearrange things and all that. And then we went back down from the Chesapeake and went over to the Bahamas. Now we went to the Keys, we spent some time in the Keys, and then we went to the Bahamas and we spent four months in the Bahamas. And then we wow. came back to the Bahamas. And we we're on our way back up to spend another summer in the Chesapeake. And I said, you know what? We're going to come right back in winter over here on the west coast of Florida. So why don't we just go around the loop again while we can? And that's what we ended up doing. So. And for those that may not know, what is the Great Loop? The Great Loop is, is called the Great American Loop. And it is an, uh, what, uh, what did I, I can't say it now. It's a trip that goes around the eastern half of the United States, which mm -hmm. most people don't realize is an island because you can actually go around it by water. Um, it's a 5,600 mile plus boat trip, can take up to a year or more. Some people have done it for numerous years. And you go up the east coast of the United States, across Lake Ontario, either to the Trent Severn Waterway or in our case, this time we did the Welling Canal. We did four of the five Great Lakes. And then you come down through Chicago, through Lake Michigan and through Chicago and out the Illinois Waterway and down through the Ohio and the Tennessee and the Mississippi and, the, and the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway into Mobile Bay, cross the Gulf of Mexico and you're back over on the in Florida or, or wherever you started out at. So so we actually started and ended in a little town called Fairhope, Alabama, because that's where we started our first loop. And we are the 96th boat to have ever done platinum, they call it, when you do the loop more than once. And we are the only boat to ever do it, end it twice on the same day. We did October 29th in two different years. So oh, wow. the Great Loop is an amazing adventure. And that's the number one question we get as Aquila owners mm -hmm. is, can you do the loop? We are the first Aquila 44 to do the loop. So wow. we had a lot of interest coming around the waterways because no one had ever seen one before. So, well, congratulations oh, I, on that. Great. Now, did you did you experience any issues with the the width of the beam and just the the, the functionality of the power cat while doing the Great Loop? Not at all. No. Not at all. Not and at all. I'm worried about something, you know, as like marina space was a big concern. 
you know, we knew we could get around because we did on a 52 foot boat the first time. So we weren't worried about length and we knew the marinas we were going to go to. But this last year was a big year because in 2020, well, besides what's going on currently, um, they're closing a bunch of the locks on the Illinois River. So people oh. that are in the loop aren't going to be able to go through during the main loop or season, the three months that they usually transverse that. Um, because of that, there were more loopers in 2019 than ever before. Over 450 people were on the loop at one time. Oh, wow. 450 boats. 170 something went gold in 2019. So, which means they did the whole thing. So that's a huge number because of that resources were limited. You know, there were only so many boats can go into marinas and here we got a big fat boat, you know, so it, it turned out to not be a problem. Uh, we chose to do the Welland Canal this time instead of doing the Trent. We could have done the Trent Severn Waterway up in Canada, but it, it would have been it would have been, it would have been, tight. Would have been tight. It would have been tight. Yes. The very last lock is 80 feet long and 23 feet wide. When you got Ooh. a 21 and a half inch you know, foot boat, you know, a 23 foot wide yeah. lock, you'll do it. You know, That's close. but we did it before. We did the Trent, so we weren't really interested in seeing it again, and we did not get to see all the Great Lakes. So we actually wanted to go into Lake uh, Superior this time as well. But the day that we were in striking range in Superior, there were 18 foot waves and we heard the song and decided it wasn't. No, thanks. So yeah, so we, we passed on Lake Superior. So what, what advice would you give for people that would like to do, to follow in your footsteps and do the Great Loop? What could you give them? Oh my gosh, the number one thing is do it. Just do it. <laughs> you know, it is the experience of your life. The, and if you have kids, people that want to do this with kids, the history lesson that they learn uh, is, I, I just got chills when I just said that, but it's extraordinary. Meeting the people in the small towns and, and experiencing life kind of as it used to be when people live by the waterways is an extraordinary experience. And, and the first time we did it was during the election of 2017 and you know and there's a lot of negativity going on in the country at the time we didn't feel that we were we were insulated a lot but we met the people that live in the country and our country's amazing it really is the people are generous and wonderful and they'll give you your cars and driving places and are there to help and it's just it's extraordinary you know so that's that's the biggest takeaway and again like i said the history lesson to to go up and, and learn about the, the south and you know what happened with slavery and with the rice and the cotton and then going up to you know the new england states and learning about the constitution and all the things that took place with the, the you know the civil war and the revolutionary war it's incredible to actually see it live totally different experience for sure uh, and what do you think, Larry? I mean, what were some? What are some of the things that you could tell, uh, you know, potential people who would like to also follow in your footsteps with the Great Loop? I, uh, it, it, it really is do it. It's, it sounds to some people like it's a daunting task, but really, you take it one day at a time. I mean, it's small. It's small steps, small little uh, day trip. I mean, you know, you can you can travel forty miles. You know, 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles in a day. Um, and that's really all you're doing. So you just add lots of little tiny steps and they all add together to this great big one, which is the, you know, five, you know, five and a half thousand mile trip. Um, but along the way, I mean, you'll, you'll run into so many other boaters, right? And the boating community is wonderful because people will share ideas with you. They share information. They tell you what's up ahead. What restaurants to go to, yeah, what, what, where to go to shop, see. you know, marinas that you can go to, um, or if you know, I mean, if you do get unlucky and you have a repair or something, there's mm -hmm. tons of people to talk to mm -hmm. that can help you with with finding somewhere to get your vessel repaired. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, overall is just do it. And and like people are saying, even if you have kids, there's so many people that do the loop with their children. Yeah, more and more are doing it with kids. More and more do it. Which is really and, exciting to see. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, yeah, you, you do have to homeschool, but the education that those kids get, they get a lot of history lessons. And what and did they, they learn? I, I, I guess, what would people learn also about boating from, from being on these trips? Confidence. You, you get a lot of confidence. Um, yeah. You learn to walk a lot because you don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> 
You get a lot yeah. of exercise, actually. Yeah, and, and, and it can be anywhere from, you know, I learned how to change, change the oil myself. I learned how to, you know, replace hoses on a generator. I mean, it could be anything like that, or you might be the kind of person who doesn't want to work on anything at all, and you just have somebody come in and fix it. But knowing you can fix something and get to where you want to get safely, um, it makes you feel really, really good. We have a buddy boat that we travel with that we met in Cape May, New Jersey in May of 2017, and they're docked right behind us right now, and we've been traveling together ever since. Wow. Oh, I so love that. We met them on the loop and they're and we're still together. You know, so it's it's we have friends that we met in the very beginning in, in 2016 before we even really got going on the loop. And we're still close friends with them. We have friends in five thousand mile radius now. We've got friends in other countries now that we can go see and visit. You know, that we all met because we're doing this. It's just it's extraordinary. Well, I think that's a big part of boating, right? Is it, I mean, you make friends that last a lifetime just from uh, being out there on the water and kind of in, in, enjoying something uh, that is different and gets you out of the the, no, the loop of life, right? Uh, you get out there and enjoy yourself. Exactly. Now, how long for a newbie, somebody that hasn't done it before, how, how about how long does it take days and days? But to do the loop? To do the loop, yes. It depends on you. Um, I think the record is something like 89 days that somebody did it. They just wow. jammed. Through. There are people doing it on jet skis. We have a-, a Someone did it on a dinghy. On a dinghy. A fit. We met him. He did it on a, a 50 oh. or 60 foot dinghy. And paddle he, boards. And I mean, pa paddle boards. It takes a long time. Right. Oh, oh, man. There's three ladies right now finishing on kayaks. You know, and obviously, it, they don't do it all in one season and, and they camp a lot or they, you know, whatever. The, the guy that did it on a dinghy played pickleball and okay. he the entire loop staying at people's houses and playing pickleball, you know, so. You know, it, but you can, you can pick the two or three really good months out of the year for the region that you're right. in, you know, go back, pick up the loop, right. you know, and do it for a couple yeah. of months and then stop, go back, right. continue your life and then next season, when the weather's again. right, you pick it back right. up again. And a lot of people do that. We have a, a couple that are real close friends of ours that they were in their third year of looping and met people from their first year of looping that were still doing it. So it really depends on the individual on what, how much time you have and what you're trying to do. The average is a year. They, a they year. really average a year to do it. Um, and it's not just old, you know, retired people. It's, there's like a <laughs> And people do it on sailboats. They, they yeah. have to put the mast down, but they do do it on sailboats as well. Hover, they, we've got one hovercraft doing it, the first zero clearance boat. <laughs> oh, cool. How that person's gotten, but you know, a lot of jet skiers. There's a lot, one, one guy's done 4,600 miles or something on jet ski. Wow. But, you know, but, but yeah, wow. so, so it really, it depends. Um, what we like to do is we like to go and, and try and spend two nights every place. Mm -hmm. At the right. moment, obviously, weather permits, you know, it tells you whether or not you're going to have to go farther or, or go less or not go at all. Um, but that's the great thing is that if the weather's bad, you just don't go, you know. Yep. But we like the, the two nights because that way we can get in in the afternoon, the one day, we can go check out the town in the evening, come back the next day, we can go sightsee or relax or fix whatever needs to be fixed or whatever, do laundry, and then we're out the next day and going again. So, you know, that's been kind of the thing. And then we look for certain places like Chicago, we spend a week, New York, we spend a week, you know, so right. those, the certain places you want to spend more time. So you plan that, you know, and just do that. And oh, there's look at that. I, uh, I figured that that'd be a great opportunity to show that that image, which is a spectacular shot. And uh, could you tell us about that experience of being in the big city, the big apple uh, on your, your Aquila Power Catamaran? Well, it was amazing, and, and we had more fun taking those pictures there. We, we blocked the whole channel there trying to get the pictures, and if you look really closely, you're going to notice that there's three of us right on the bridge there, but no one's driving, so, you know, but, you know, <laughs> we're not talking about that too much, but um, it really was a spectacular thing. When you come into New York Harbor and you're on your own boat, it is the the feeling you get is absolutely mind-boggling you know my grandparents my family all came from europe 
And my grandmother had always talked about coming through Ellis Island and coming in the boat when she was four years old and seeing the Statue of Liberty there. So for me to do it on our boat, it was just an experience you just never want to forget. I mean, it's just amazing. So yeah, wow, you're I, pull, pulling on my heartstrings. I just got a little emotional there. April. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, um, uh, that's amazing. It really, it, you, do tr you cry the whole time you're doing that, going through <laughs> there. It's just, it's, and then you have to miss boats. You know, there's lots of boats. <laughs> lots of boats. <laughs> lots of ferries. I'm taking day. pictures. He's driving. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, but the, I mean, talk about views of the city. And I had the opportunity last year to to get there in front of the Statue of Liberty and just look up also at the city opposite and just seeing, you know, uh, that it's just incredible seeing that skyline from a boat, right? It is. It is. And the other thing is that, you know, people, when you say New York, the first thing you, well, I won't say the first thing we think of right now, but the first thing you think of is the Twin Towers and you think of Manhattan and New York City we were so blown away by upstate new york and how uh, gorgeous the hudson river valley is mm -hmm. you know if it didn't snow it wasn't so cold up there i would live in the hudson river valley <laughs> so I, it just but you that's part of this journey too is is seeing these areas going through south carolina and and you know going through savannah georgia it looks like you're in the savannas in africa i mean it's just dark water and just for miles and miles and miles you see grasses the, the grasses that they use to make the baskets out of and stuff but seeing those little towns and the big cities in this different way coming into chicago on lake michigan and seeing chicago on the horizon that's another one of those oh my god chill moments because it's just so beautiful you know, and in Lake Michigan's blue, you know, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so those are the things that you don't get to experience when you're coming in and by airplane or by a car or on a train or something. It's just a whole different experience. So, wow. Uh, Kelly, I know we've got, do we, do you have the, the arches photo? I do. Let's oh, see yeah. here. I wanted to see oh. this one too. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. St. Louis is interesting. There's, there's nowhere to dock your boat there. So oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Mooring, mooring balls, or how do you go about that? Well, you 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 don't. I mean, there's some mooring. <laughs> they're no, they're not, like they're not. like ten miles or more away. Yeah, you you have to go to Alton or Grafton, one of the towns that's upriver, and then rent a car and drive to St. Louis. You can't get there from by boat. <laughs> there's no that's marina. Interesting. Mm -hmm. No waterfront. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you definitely have some gorgeous photos. And how are how are you taking the photos? Well, those, those we have to have a buddy boat, you know, where we go. Ah, uh, buddy boat. So, yep. unfortunately, the buddy boat did a good job on them. <laughs> so, you know, excellent. So but um, we, yeah. But every once in a while, we'll get a drone shot. Yeah, we do get. Drone I was shots. gonna say, yeah, that that would come in handy in certain situations too, yeah. for sure. Yeah, not um, in New York Harbor. You don't want to do a drone. <laughs> no, too many helicopters and everything else flying around. But um, so, and also, um, you did. You, you said that you have been down in the British Virgin Islands uh, aboard an Aquila, correct? No, we saw one down there. We did. We did. We were going to rent it or charter one and, and do the trip down there. And that was when Irma hit, and we okay. canceled the trip. So, but, but yeah, um, when we were down there, we were on a, a sailing catamaran. A sailing catamaran. So it was just kind of a, a coincidence to see it. Yeah. And what do you April, think? People saw an Aquila when we were down there sailing around. Yeah. And she really liked the boat. Yeah. And what do you think about the Virgin Islands? I mean, have you, uh, you know, tell me about it, your experience uh, down in the British Virgin Islands. Oh, we've, we've been, spent extensive time. We're avid divers. So we've spent a lot of time down in the Caribbean, all, almost every island down there. Mm -hmm. And we love the BVI, and that's actually the BVI, the AVI. We've gone to the uh, and the SBI, and the, SBI, the Spanish Virgin Islands. We've been to Vieques and Calibra. Uh, we've been all through the West Indies. We've been all through the ABCs. So we've spent a great deal of time down there, and that's actually the hopeful trip next year is to take this boat down there uh, and go spend a year down traveling through all the islands. So that's one thing we talked about. The other one we were going to do, but now we're not, was going to take the boat over to Europe and do the European loop. We want to wow. do that as well. the 6,000 miles of waterway that you could do there. Um, mm -hmm. It would just be too hard with the cat. It's doable, but it'd be very difficult, and we would have to leave off a lot of areas that we wouldn't be able to go to because of the beam. So sure. when we do that, would probably just get a small canal boat and, and charter for a year or something. But that's the other loop that we want to do as well. Okay. Uh, 
Well, no, no. So, the other loop we want to do is the down easter loop. Right. So that's what that was the next one we want to talk about. So that's what was supposed to be the plan this year and what we're still hoping we're going to do. There's something called the Downing Circle Loop. And we are actually supposed to be on our way right now to Canada. Um, and we're going to go up through the Rideau Canal, up into Ottawa and Old Quebec City and Montreal, down the St. Lawrence Seaway, around Nova Scotia, through oh, Prince wow. Edward Island, down the coast of Maine, and come back. And we start, we start and end in New York, so the Erie Canal. Um, that's where we're supposed to be headed this year. It kind of closed Canada on us. So, um, yeah, so, we'll so I think yeah. Right now, we should be in Norfolk. Yeah, we we're supposed to be in Norfolk about now, yeah. So anyway, so we're kind of waiting it out. We'll see what happens. And, and if nothing else, we're going to at least try and get up and do the Rideau this year and, and do Old Quebec City and Montreal and Ottawa and then come back down. And that's called the Triangle. But we'll, you know, we definitely are going to try and make our way back up there as soon as we can. Well, while you wait it out, at least you're on your 44, just kicking back and relaxing too. Yeah. Getting projects done. That's always really nice too. That's what everybody says, even on a, in a house and getting yeah. projects done. Exactly. Larry's installing more solar on the boat. So that's that's been his big project. Ah, very nice. nice. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, well, so Matt, it's self sufficient. If I could just figure out how to create diesel fuel, we'd be good. <laughs> I'm telling you, you could start your own you, you could start your own YouTube channel and get a million subscribers doing the things you guys are doing. <laughs> I don't. I, that would that would be work. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is very true. That'd be a lot of oh, work. Oh man. Yeah, we we've had some amazing experiences, and we are very blessed. We definitely don't take it for granted. We talk to a lot of Kila owners and future Kila owners, and and really, you know, try and give our our the benefit of our knowledge and our mistakes that we've made, so other people don't have to, you know, and really help people figure out the best way to to get into an Aquila 44 and to do the loop or whatever they want to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really a lot of fun and would love to be able to talk to other owners and, and help them get there. Well, I mean, not only that, I mean, we also talk to Aquila. So, right. I mean, we're talking to their Great. designers, um, yeah, provi providing, providing feedback on things mm -hmm. we like or if you have something we think could be made better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we give them the feedback and it's like, we're not, we don't complain about what goes on, we just offer ideas and say from a practical point of view, living on board a vessel full time, this would make more sense for us. Right. We were the first liveaboards in their fleet. So so we okay. spent more time on the boat than their designers had, you know, because we're on it 24-7. Yep. So it gave us a, a different viewpoint and not being boat builders or boat designers. Right. It gave us a different viewpoint of what it takes to make this vessel even better than she already is. So, and that's and she is, and it is a wonderful vessel. I know. Mm -hmm. Like I say, we're we're approaching. It'll be two years, yeah. June twenty ninth. So we're coming up on two years. So. And I have to say, I think uh, just from your feedback to the company uh, and to Marine Max, you're basically changing the way that they create boats in the future. Because I mean, any piece of feedback that you you give and any customer gives. Um, they they listen, you know, and they, uh, they do. They do because actually several of the things that they did for us are on the new boats. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> they go. Oh, it's already there. So we did. So we do know they listen. They do. Um, they because, do. Yeah. Well, we we've talked to folks that are getting boats now coming off the, the assembly line, mm -hmm. and they're going, "Oh yeah, we have all that stuff yeah. on the boat." Yeah. <laughs> we told them yeah. they should have. They that. did. Yeah. So they are doing that. So. <laughs> have you had the opportunity to be aboard the other models of Aquila boats? You know, sadly enough, no, oh wait, I did I did cheat and I snuck on a thirty six over at St. Again. <laughs> uh, we have never been on any other models. Wow. Other than when we walked aboard this one, I kind of peeked in the door and that was it. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I've I've always wanted to go on a forty eight, which I haven't. Mm -hmm. Of course the new seventy, you know. Oh yes. See that, you know, and, and, and there's some other I mean, stuff coming down the we're line. We're assuming something will be between seventy and forty eight. <laughs> There is a 54. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, there is a 54. So there's something that you can move up if you need some more space. There's going to be a 54. That's what we've been. We've been very active with helping design the 54. I'm so, sure. Oh, very good. I don't think I've even seen it yet. I just know that yeah. it's coming. Well, and definitely. One, uh, of things, one of the things they needed was they needed a woman's perspective on the galley. Yeah. And storage. Okay. Right. Men, and men, April, April was kind enough to provide that. 
you know, I'll just yeah. put it over here. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> already committed to buying the 54. I'm going, eh, it depends on how sharp the pencil is when we talk to Raul. <laughs> <laughs> 10 more feet, just all the possibilities of what you can do with 10 more feet. Uh, 10 more and three feet you know, wider. It has a only, refrigerator. It's only two feet longer than our hammer. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. it's, it's, it's nothing. We've been there. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> That's We're really great. Contract ready to go. I'm just not ready to sign it. <laughs> well, for all the folks at home, uh, if you want to check out the Aquila 44, the Aquila 54, the uh, information on the upcoming Aquila 70 in a few, uh, you know, Future models, uh, definitely check out AquilaBoats.com. They have all the information there uh, that you're going to need. And of course, if you want to look through boats uh, in inventory or uh, just learn more about the Aquila brand as well, MarineMax.com uh, has that information too. So, and April Leary, is there a good resource that you can suggest uh, if people are looking for more information about the Great uh, America's Great Loop? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. There's the America Great Loop Cruisers Association, it's AGLCA. Um, even if they don't want to do the Great Loop, I highly recommend that people join AGLCA. Um, huge community, huge family. We have our, our burgies that we fly that lets other people know that we're members of it. So as soon as you pull into Marina, you have automatic family there. Mm -hmm. It's a very active boating group. They have a forum daily that you can learn all kinds of information that you never want to know. And <laughs> But really terrific, terrific people. So, and everything you want to know is there at AGLCA. Um, it's very reasonable to join. There's also lots of other benefits for marina discounts and fuel discounts and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So just, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's, it's a wonderful organization. And like I said, you'll learn everything you want to know about this wild trip that we did. Great. Um, well, shout out to the AGLCA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have, we'll definitely uh, put their information. I'm going to give it a look. See, I don't know oh. if I could take a year off, but man, you have me so inspired right yeah. now. I I want to hop in a boat. I'm in one month interval. Where are you sitting right now? Uh, I'm in, I'm in Safety Harbor, Florida. Same here. Where are we sitting right now? Fort uh, Myers. Yeah, but we're on an Aquila. <laughs> April. I think we got to get down there. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my house. Yeah. I worked the first on the on the first loop, so I was still I owned a mortgage company at the time. So and I was working and calling my clients and saying, "They go, where are you?" I'm going, "I think I'm in Philadelphia. I'm not sure where we are, but you know, <laughs> so I, I did work the, my whole first loop. So you know, so it's, it's doable. definitely there are a lot of people that do work down the loop. So as long as you can That's get true. internet, you can do it. So That's true. Yep. Very true. Well, Larry, April, Abby, it was so great to have you guys. I'm sure Abby's itching to play ball. I noticed she had a new ball too. As we were shooting this, she changed from one of her balls to a new right, color. Right. So. <laughs> it's a purple day. Yeah. For something else, to be honest. <laughs> Probably wants a cookie or something. Yeah. That too. Well, thank you very much for being on. We really appreciate it. Thank oh, you. It was our pleasure. We're really honored to do this for you guys. Hey, and if Larry and I split sideways, if you guys can even see it, no, I don't, you can't. Let's but see here. I can, I can make it bigger. Okay, so our couches. Oh, we had our couches redone. These are oh wow, Aquila white that they normally come with. You know, I was wondering about that. Yeah, so we had them switched to brown to a chocolate brown. Great. So, so it's a very great homey. <laughs> well, that tells everybody there is customization that can be done aboard your uh, Aquila for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So. But well, we're honored to do this for you guys and, and you. tell people if they have any questions, they're always welcome to, to contact us through Facebook on our One Eye Dog Facebook page and anything else too. Because we love to talk to new Aquila owners, old Aquila owners. And it's, we, don't, we don't let them complain. Tell them yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, all good. Right. Thank you. Thank you guys again. Your story is amazing. It's inspirational. It definitely has me wanting to go out and get boating. Um, for more information, you can check out the uh, One Eye Dog Facebook page mm -hmm. and um, America's Great Loop Cruisers Association page uh, for more info on that. And as always, follow Marine Max uh, Leisure Boating on Facebook and Marine Max Online on Instagram and YouTube. We're bringing you all the great boating news and great stories uh, like Larry and April's story here. And uh, for more information on Aquila Boats and to see what they have to offer, Aquila Boats. Uh, at Aquila Boats on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, AquilaBoats.com. And I think that is it. I you hope you it. guys, I wish you safe travels. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And we'll see you out on the water.
Hopefully. Thank you. We'll see you. Everybody have a great day.